Hey guys, it's me again, Anna. Um, I've been a little offline because first I've had... Uh, I got rained on, <laughs> and when I mean rained on, I mean I was using a freaking long uh, overcoat and uh, all my clothes got wet. I got really wet to the bones. Shoes and all, I tried to dry myself in those hand drying things. Uh, at school, but still wasn't enough, and I got I was completely soaked the entire day, and so I caught a bad cold. And the other day, I got rain on again, not as badly, uh, <coughs> but still. So I've been wanting to update, and uh, it's not easy because uh, I did update about my religious. Uh, transformation in French. I wanted to do it in English, but it's quite compli complicated. I ramble a lot and uh, it involves really complex feelings, complex... because uh, it's not easy going from agnostic atheist to agnostic theist and it was really an overwhelming experience. It's, it's something that it is hard to explain and it, it, it involves uh, weird experience and uh, it's, it's not easy however i want to update on dietary changes and these are not um uh because um uh as you probably know and even though um you don't understand french you probably can infer from the titles that I am converting to Judaism, and uh, lately I have decided to start eating kosher, and <laughs> it's, it's a lot, um, that's a lot of changes to do, because in my country there isn't a lot of kosher friendly stuff, uh, there isn't <coughs> a lot of Jews to begin with, and Curiously, there are more Jews than uh, Muslims, but I find halal food and uh, <laughs> can't find kosher food. But I try to eat kosher ingredients and make kosherish choices. Why kosherish and not kosher? Because there are a few things. Uh, at school, I, eat, I always eat at school. Uh, while I'm because it's 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 uh, the course is uh, kind of includes the 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 food expenses and stuff. So I've been trying to go with the vegetarian or fish option. Now the vegetarian option, and this is why I call it kosherish, is because it has eggs and there's no way to know whether the the eggs had blood spots in them or not. So they may or not be kosher. And the fish um, option is not always uh, available uh, <coughs> because sometimes it has seafood and I can't eat seafood as well. And uh, then even if there's chicken or something like that that is by principle acceptable, there the, the thing is you don't know where those meats come from, where they, whether they were contaminated by other meat, that there is a lot of things. So... I try to eat kosher as mo, mo, mo as much as <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this tickling? It's like it's not dirty, but it's tickling. Um. So yeah, I try to eat co kosherish as option, and of course the dishes are not kosherized. So whatever I eat cannot be kosher, and I'm not too. Uh, Jewish yet, so even if I'm eating kosher ingredients, that that's not never going to be fully kosher. But yeah, I do my best. Uh, so yeah, this is it's been quite interesting because I never expected to be able to do this uh, cold turkey, and it's it's, it's really interesting. Be interesting because like today, and it's it's dreadful because. At my place, everyone eats a lot of pork, and it's hard to go by. And there's my father just bought presunto, 
bacon and lots of meat preserves and Portuguese have lots of meat preserves, mostly pork based. And I kind of, you know, didn't have any options for breakfast. I went there and I look at the fridge, a lot of pork options. And believe me, usually I'd get tempted because I love bacon and I love those things. I felt disgusted at it. It's like I felt truly disgusted. I closed the fridge and uh, I didn't touch it. I ate um, bananas and cheese instead. And um, yeah, that's curious because uh, sometimes I go to places and I, and I look at things that I used to like. And it's like I remember the taste and I like those things, but I feel disgusted thinking about them. Which is quite, uh, you know, making things easy. And the thing is, on the last day I ate non-kosher was the first, the 31st of January, no, the 31st of December. And um, my father was buying Leitang, which is kind of a baby piglet thing that they eat here. And I felt sick. I completely felt sick. I had cr stomach cramps. I had... It's like when I made the promise that I started, that I'd start eating kosher, I started rejecting non-kosher things. So it's like, uh, some, it's weird. Anyway, uh, I just weighed myself. And uh, believe me or not, since... The 1st of January, I've lost 7 kilos, which is weird because I'm not trying to lose weight. If anything, I've been eating more than I usually eat, <laughs> so it's quite curious that I lost a lot of weight. Um, and it's not because of the kind of foods uh, that I eat either, but um, in terms of healthy or not healthy, no, it's not, it's just um, different. But I, I lost 7 kilos already, so it's quite interesting and uh, quite, it, it's quite, um, you know, encouraging too, because maybe some foods are just not meant to eat in some people's bodies and um, eating kosher has been easier than I expected, although of course it's not real kosher because there are certain things that you can avoid. Um, now, there are some things that I did learn that I was a little disappointed. For instance, the soup that I, the, the soup mixes that you buy, uh, they contain trace amounts of stuff, so you need to be really careful with them, whether they have trace amounts of fish, shellfish, or whatever that may not make them kosher even though the natural ingredients are kosher another thing and this nobody told me but i kind of will avoid to eat any meat as much as practical unless they come prepackaged from um a company that only produces you know kosher animals uh, because if you buy them from the, you know, from other places, they will use the same knives on uh, beef, uh, pork, whatever. So even though you may be buying something that is kosher in principle, although it's not kosher because it was not slaughtered according to Allah, it's still, if, it, if it's one of the acceptable meats, it may have been cross-contaminated, so I'm trying to, um, and fish as well, I avoid buying fresh fish for the same thing, because where you can buy um, salmon and stuff like that, you will also be able to buy shellfish and uh, other things that are not acceptable. And there will be some cross-contamination, so I t try to buy either canned or um, frozen stuff uh, that is separate. Because, uh, the fro for instance, the f a lot of 
things that when you think it's fresh fish, a lot of times it's unfrozen fish anyway. So you may as well just get the frozen one that has been, you know, for, um, instantly frozen and uh, has been kept frozen until it gets to your place and it avoids the contamination from shellfish and whatever. Because, for, for instance, salmon and stuff is fished in icy, and of course, you're not going to get uh, contamination from clams and whatever they sell at the, the fish uh, part of the supermarket or wherever you buy your um, products. So, it's a good option. And, um, yeah, that, that's, that's a, a little bit hard to... to, to to think about these things, but hopefully they came to me kind of naturally. As for eggs, of course, if you're you, cooking with eggs, you have to break the eggs apart, see if they have blood spots or not, and so it's a, a little more hassle, but, you know, it's you'll get used to it. Um, and uh, so far I haven't been cooking, um, I've just been buying, you know, canned chickpeas and canned tuna, and that's what I eat I, um, for dinner, if I eat at all, and some granola, and uh, so the rest I eat at school, and uh, I, tr I used to buy my breakfast at school, but now I know that my options are either cakes or non-kosher options, and I I don't like to eat cakes in the morning, so I tend to buy, um, you know, some smoked salmon or something, some cheese or spread, something uh, in a supermarket. And then in the morning, I'll buy some fresh bread from the bakery. And uh, I'll prepare my own breakfast at school. It, it may look cheap, it may look things, but at least I know it's kosher. Uh, that it wasn't cross contaminated with anything, uh, so that that's uh, that's been so far my option, and uh, yeah, so I think uh, I'm handling it better than I expected, really much better than I expected. I really expected to have cravings for foods that I can eat and stuff like that, but so far haven't had any of these problems and I'm sorry I'm pausing this so I'm back <laughs> um, and uh, yeah so it's been easier than I expected I know that so far uh, I've been doing quite well I haven't craved any non-kosher foods so I am I'm pretty adaptable with diets I'm just scared because sometimes I I cease to eat and I forget to eat and I tend to undereat and stuff like that and I, I was afraid that changing my diet would make me prone to undereat again but actually I'm eating far more than I usually do and I'm losing weight which is quite surprising and so yes um the next Thing will be starting to observe Shabbos and uh, this is going to be a little harder because uh, of course I don't have any guidelines I know some mitzvahs I know some things that need to be done and of course I won't be able to follow Shabbos perfectly for one because I'm not yet converted and for another I am still living with other people, I depend on other people, and uh, it, the lifestyle may clash, but I'm going to do my best, and uh, I'll probably move someplace else soon, so henceforth I will do my best to uh, observe as well as I can. So that's um, basically the update I wanted to give. I'm also restarting sports, um, my ankle is doing better, so I think I will be able to exercise again, uh, so yeah, bye, I hope everyone is well, uh, please, if you have anything, you know, something you 
from what I said that I may be doing wrong, please let me know. Bye.